This black and white image isn't just a noisy blob, but it actually represents this mountain range. This displacement map is often called a light map, because it exactly that, it represents how high things are above a surface. It's great for modeling, it's great for adding in like fast details and stuff like this, but it is limited. For example, if I wanted my displacement map to have like a head emit out of it, we couldn't do that, because if I did this kind of like vertical line test on the z-axis, it intersects twice or even more times. But if instead of a black and white image, we use the red, the green, the blue, a three-dimensional kind of texture, we can now not only move like upwards, but also on the X and the Y, and that is what lets us do overhangs and stuff like this. Now, I already have a model, and that needs to be a vector displacement map, but it didn't start off with a plane. This video is about that, and it wouldn't be a CG Matter tutorial if it wasn't procedural vector displacement maps. This tutorial is brought to you by Squarespace, more about that later on. Let's start off with just a simple example how to do this, no geometry nodes, nothing. So to get this thing as a vector displacement map, I need to be able to flatten it, because then I can do the reverse transformation. So step one is I'm going to make a basic plane to represent exactly where our canvas is. So this goes exactly from zero to one on both X and Y. I'm then going to position my head so that it rests pretty much on that square. Next, I want to cut off everything that is below this, and I'll show you why we're doing that in a second. I'm going to start off with a cube, G, Z, minus one, and then I'm going to position this underneath. And then we're going to do that obvious Boolean where we cut the difference of this cube. And now we have this model that, let me kind of move it forwards a little, it kind of like emits from this plane in a sense and then is perfectly contained. The critical step is you want to go underneath this model, this giant n-gon that's going to be created and deleted. So why did I do all of this? Well, again, I'm trying to flatten this onto a plane. And if you think about it, flattening onto a plane is what UV unwrapping is. And by having this kind of closed model, except for this like bottom hole, of course, we can do a UV unwrap that is on a single island. So if I go to the UV editing, I take all of this, you can do any kind of unwrap. So here's like angle based, you can see all of this has been compressed to a 2D plane and a single island. But of course, the issue is all the relevant features like these uh, eyes and you know, all of the good stuff is compressed on a little space. Well, Blender 4.3 added this minimum stretch, which does take longer, but it's going to perform much better. Boom, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to scale it down so that our boundaries are safe. We have our geometry that is in 3D space. And now we also have the transformation that sends it to the XY plane, we have our model, and then we send it to this UV space is what I wanted to show you, right? So let's think about it. If I have this XY plane and I want the kind of the function or the map that sends it into this 3D, I'm going to need the position and I'm going to need the UV coordinates that are conveniently here for us. If I now subtract these two, so position minus our UV coordinates, let's preview that. This is the exact transformation that is our vector displacement map. And that is conserved as we go on to the 2D plane and backwards and forwards. So this kind of swirly mess that you can see here is the ear. There's maybe a bit of face detail here. This encodes or stores the information of the uh, 3D model. So let's bake a, I don't know, it can be a 2K texture. It will be called VDM for vector displacement map, not to be confused with EDM, whatever. 32-bit float, very important you enable this. This is so that we get maximum precision, but also it allows for negative values and stuff like that. Make a 32-bit float image. That's going to be a non-color image because I don't want any like color space transform. And then we're going to do our standard cycles baking. You need to select your target image texture node and select your active UV map. Once you've done all of those things, I'm just going to bake the uh, emission, which means what is being fed right into it. And when you hit bake, now it's not even going to take too long. Notice that there's a bit of a gap over here, which I wanted, so it wouldn't take all the geo. But we're going to talk about in the procedural approach how to like soften that a little. I'm going to call this VDM. Again, it needs to be a open EXR at non-color at full 32-bit float. In fact, if I take a plane and I'm going to move it off to the side here, I can subdivide it a bunch. And then for our material, our displacement, which notice is a vector socket, that is going to receive a image texture of our VDM, which almost works. You can see it wants to erupt this like pig faced thing in your material. Make sure you go to settings and let the displacement actually happen. So it's not bump only, but it's one of these others. Let me add some lighting. Okay, we have our face coming out of the plane. It's almost there, but for the way that we happen to bake this, I think all we need to do is make this displacement map stronger. Let's see, I'm going to scale it. Zero means nothing. And then as I increase it, let's try to go all the way up to two. And that seems to have represented our thing quite well. If it looks super faceted, that's because we haven't sampled enough points. So you just want to keep subdividing. And every time you do, you're going to get a 4x bump in your resolution. This method also works with a shade smooth. I can totally start doing some weird things over here. In fact, let me scale this by two and bring down the scale to one. And now I have multiple heads as if I modeled them all. If I move the UV map, so too will it, you know, do that there. Kind of the takeaway here is you can do a vector displacement map by taking your model, putting it overlapping in UV 
space, cutting the bottom, doing a UV unwrap, and then baking the difference between the two. Now let's do the procedural approach. There are simply two things I enjoy in this life. The first is vector displacement, but very close in second is making websites with Squarespace, the sponsor of this video. My website, which now I use as like a Patreon clone, is indeed hosted and designed with Squarespace, although I use a lot of uh, HTML. You're living in the modern era. If, if you aren't like going to sleep lulling yourself by saying AI, AI, AI. The point is uh, Squarespace has AI-based uh, layout generation and content generation. Asset browser, essential, because I literally host video for video sharing on that Patreon clone exclusive thing. And thirdly, there is a payment platform that makes it easy to host either exclusive stuff or like a membership page. They accept PayPal, Visa, anything that you would pay with with Squarespace payments. So you can make a website over at squarespace.com. And when you're ready to take that thing live, you can use my link in the description for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. <laughs> I'm gonna start off by doing the same thing just with nodes, right? I'm gonna take this cube and cut off the bottom. Add a cube, and just so that we don't get any weirdness where it spawns over there and all that, control A to apply everything. Here's our cube. I'm gonna join these together so I can see them both at once. And because we have like numbers we can use, we can geometrically perfectly, if we subtract a half, position this where we need it to. There's a mesh boolean, set it to difference, connect this here, and now we've cut off the bottom of our mesh. And it's quite fast, right? If I rotate this, you're gonna see it keeps doing a, a boolean. Next, what I said, I want to do is I want to get rid of this bottom face, which might seem to be like a pain in geo nodes. I have to say, oh, get rid of the face that's exactly at zero. But remember, this face can be defined as, you know, the biggest end gone with like a hundred vertices. In other words, I can delete geometry by faces. Face neighbors tells you the vertex count. If that vertex count is greater than, let's say, 10, delete it, which in all likelihood will just be this. And note that as we rotate this, it's going to update dynamically. Okay, so the next step now was to do a UV unwrap. Can that also be done with geometry nodes? Of course it can. So UV unwrap, my main gripe is that minimum stretch we liked isn't on here. Okay, so we just have these two options, but they both will have this property that they um, map to a single island in UV space. I'm going to set position to UV space. You can see it's nice and flattened. I also want to kind of scale this down because again, it's touching the boundaries of UV space. Same thing, scale it by 0.9. We're just doing the same operations, but now nice and procedurally. And to capture the position before we do this kind of like flattening procedure, I'm literally going to do that. I'm going to capture the attribute of of position before, you know, the transformation happens. This corresponds to the 3D one, this corresponds to the 2D one, and I can do a very basic subtraction. I'm going to take the position, subtract that from the 2D position. It will be incorrect because I didn't set this to subtract, and like a little silly dummy, I also have these reversed. Okay, so we have our vector displacement map. That is the same thing. Now, the issue is, if we're doing this in geometry nodes, we need some kind of texture baking approach, and there is no easy way to do that. So you do have a few options. The first one that I really Really, really don't like is we can store this as an attribute. So here I'm going to store this VDM for vector displacement map, and then I'm going to apply this. So what we're left with is just this flat mesh that has an attribute on it. If I now go to the material and I look at this attribute, it should be here. So VDM, this information is now there and it's really truly in this 2D space. At this point, you can again bake down the texture onto an image texture, but we need a UV space to do this on. I don't know, I just do like a frontal projection and have this take up the space and bake onto here. But of course, that is awkward. It would work, but it is awkward. Really, again, the, uh, the reason I don't want to apply this is we have this nice procedural setup where I can rotate this and at every stage, it's actually calculating a vector displacement map for us. And I want to preserve that. So what I'm going to do is I somehow need to bake this information onto a plane. So I'm going to make a grid. I'm going to move this up by 0.5. So it's taking up UV space. I'm going to make this much denser. I'm going to start with 200 by 200. You can think of this as the X and Y resolution of our ultimate image. And I want to store this information somehow in the grid. You have a few options. The first one is we can take this over here and I can move it a bit higher. So it's just sitting above the plane. You can now do a ray cast. So what I mean by this is you can ray cast onto the geometry shooting upwards. So again, I'm on this plane. I'm shooting rays upwards and seeing which ones hit this kind of geometry over here. And then I'm kind of sampling the attribute if that's the case. So we can literally um, sample this attribute if we set it to vector. And that actually does it quite well. Your other option, like I said, there would be many, is you can sample the nearest surface. But I kind of like this raycast approach. It works. I can change the resolution dynamically. So let's go up to 300 by 300 pixels. And you can see this boundary is getting kind of less and less, or it's getting sharper and sharper is what I mean to say. But I did say we have an advantage of doing this with geometry nodes, and that is this boundary. I want to blur it a little so that we have a soft transition, a fall off to get here. Well, I'm just going to sample the nearest surface of our unwrapped thing. What I want to sample is 
is this. So I'm sampling the nearest vector displacement attribute. And now if we view this, you can see our grid actually stores this information. And more than that, unlike this, it extrapolated it. So if the boundary kind of ends here, if there's a point that's outside of that, it will find the nearest neighbor. That's why it looks kind of stretched out, kind of like a tunnel. I want this, but I want to say only do it within a certain distance. So again, we can sample the nearest surface, which will be the same point. This time I'm going to sample the position. And what I'm interested in is how far away from the boundary are you? We're calculating an SD uh, sine distance function. I'm going to calculate the distance between the position of a grid point and its nearest neighbor. It will look like that. And the reason I like this approach is we can now do a inversion and then do some kind of clamping here. So I don't know the exact value. Should be something slightly above zero. So let's do 0.02. You can see we have this nice fall off that we can also flip uh, to be an interior. So I'm going to mix this with a vector displacement of zero on this kind of map. And now you see we have a much nicer blurring. And you can control the sharpness very easily uh, with this map range. So let me just store this VDM over here. I'm just going to do this as a material for demonstration purposes. So let's put this on a material. So here you can see our vector displacement map. What I was saying is any transformation, you're going to see it makes a new vector displacement map. Now, the, you, you see Blender just froze. The reason for that is I put the mesh above the plane. So you don't want to do this in a way that there's nothing intersecting the bottom plane. It will make um, part of this process kind of freak out. Our geometry at this point is essentially it is a plane. I want to view this as a principled BSDF and use this vector displacement map Map as the vector displacement map. It's going to try to do it, but just like before, you have to set this to displacement only. And here you go. It seems silly, right? We use this mesh to bring it to a grid to recalculate the mesh. But once you save your vector displacement map, it makes more sense. So in instead of baking it down, you can calculate this on the fly, use this as a baking setup for your VDM maps. There are obvious applications for like sculpting. You can store other kinds of information. Like this is how the ocean modifier makes its waves. It's with that vector displacement because there might be overhangs. But at this point, I've gone on too long. So vector displacement maps. I'm going to put this file, the one that's procedural, or even one that I worked more on, I don't know, on the Patreon or on www.cgmatter.com. And that is it.